tonight. I had started having hip pain four years ago. I had to completely stop running. I was playing powder puff football. Three minutes left to go in the game, she goes down. An ABC 27 special presentation. I couldn't ride my bike anymore. I wasn't hiking anymore. She was taking more breaks than I had ever seen her do in her life from physical activity. It was excruciating, it really was. We were hoping it wasn't real serious, but it was. I just knew something was really wrong. Penn State Hershey Bone and Joint Institute presents Break the Pain, brought to you by Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Good evening, I'm Chuck Rhodes. Warmer weather means kids and adults are outside playing sports, either recreational or organized. And statistics show that more than 5 million children and teens get hurt each year from playing sports. One of the most commonly injured knee ligaments is the ACL. There are about 150,000 ACL injuries each year in the U.S. 62% of organized sports injuries occur during practices, not the actual games. Tonight, specialists from Penn State Hershey Bone and Joint Institute are in the ABC 27 call center to answer your questions. So call the number on the bottom of the screen or you can email your questions during the show to questions at abc27.com. Dr. Tammy Palaka will answer your email questions throughout tonight's show and also keep in mind that all calls and emails are, remain confidential. So here's Deborah Pinkerton to kick it off sharing one patient's story. Deborah, Thanks, Chuck. A Cumberland County teenager was at the top of her game, soccer that is, when one night it all came crashing down. Girl Megan Handmaker scores. A dream come true for this freshman at Drexel University. For Megan, it's taken years and years of hard work to get to this point. It began when she was five. I loved going out and being active when I was a little kid, always running around, played multiple sports. She started in gymnastics for a couple of years, but that wasn't active enough for Megan. So we transitioned her to soccer and then she loved it. As she started playing in just the rec league here uh, locally, and then as she moved up to the next level, you know, we saw that she had some potential. The medals, the trophies tell the story. In probably seventh, sixth or seventh grade, I tried out for this Olympic development team, which is a state team. And I made that, and that was like a big thing. Like, oh, okay, I have potential in soccer. My wife and I went to most of her games. We enjoyed following her. She was very committed, loved the sport. In Megan's junior year at East Pennsboro High School, she broke the record for scoring the most goals in a single season. I'm not playing soccer to break records. I'm playing because I love it. So to do that for my school team, I had 24 goals in the season which broke the record. I'm not sure what the record was before, but it was kind of a big deal. It was only my junior year. So I was really excited about that. That same year, Megan received some exciting news from Drexel University. I was offered a scholarship uh, October of my junior year in high school. So they offered that to me and that was, that's a pretty, it was a, it was a good scholarship offer. I'd committed to them and they'd committed to me, but you don't technically sign until your senior year. Senior year. A year Megan will never forget, specifically an evening in November. I was playing powder puff football. It's a thing our school does every year. Megan's family had some doubts about her playing the game. She was excited about it, enthusiastic about it, and really wanted to play, you know, undefeated, all that good stuff for powder puff. And, and you know, what could go wrong, right? What could go wrong did go wrong. It was freezing cold um, that November, and it was three minutes till the end of the game. So we're, we're looking at the clock, gathering up our stuff, you know, getting ready to go. I was running through the defense, and this girl just hit me from the side pretty hard. She goes down, and, you know, from there on, you know, it was pretty devastating. My knee, it was excruciatingly painful. I, it, like, it popped three times and people, people around me even heard it. They were like, oh my gosh. And I'm, I'm not one to like go down and not get back up. I'm normally bounce right back up. So people knew right away that something was wrong. My wife and I have seen her go down numerous of times and she has always bounced back up, but this time she did not. So it's a very scary thing to see that something is obviously very wrong. I was on the ground and the, 
I just running through my head was, oh my gosh, Drexel. Like, that was literally the first thing that went through my mind. When I got over there, she was on the ground and she was mostly hysterical. And so that's when I said, we, we got to get in the car, we got to go to the hospital. I went and got the car, drove it onto the field, we loaded her up, and she was in pain. I mean, we knew, didn't know how serious it was, but we knew it was uh, pretty serious. And when I tested her ACL in the office, um, it seemed that it wasn't intact, um, and doing the job and restraining me that it should be doing. An MRI confirmed the doctor's suspicions. This is an MRI of Megan's knee. In this particular image, you can see the PCL, and it's a dark band. The ACL should look fairly similar. This is where Megan's ACL should be, and you can see that it's, it has a white line through it, and that's where she tore it. Which means surgery was needed. I think that the, 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 one of the toughest times is when you give um, an athlete uh, a bad diagnosis. They came in and just said, you, know, you tore your ACL and I just broke down. I mean, instantly just couldn't hold it in. That was probably the hardest thing. You know, as a parent, you know, you never want to see your kid you know, go through something like that. At the time, it was devastating. You know, Megan had goals set for herself for her senior season. Everything, like Drexel going through my mind, East Penn, like my senior season, and my senior year too, it wasn't even just my season. It was, wow, like I'm gonna spend my entire senior year in physical therapy, like that was just not what I wanted to do at all, so. Dr. Silvas was just very good about saying, it, you have to look forward now. You know, you have to look at Drexel. This is all about preparation for Drexel. Her high school season is done. Before surgery, Megan needed physical therapy. So I saw her for maybe about a half a dozen visits preoperatively to get her range of motion back, to get the swelling out of her knee, to get her on a strengthening program. It was hard, it hurt. I mean, everything hurt at that point. I couldn't even like lay in bed and roll over without that being painful. Once she was limber, a surgery date was set. I, mean, I was just ready to get surgery and start really healing. I was nervous. Well, there's few things more character building, you know, than watching your daughter go off on a on a operating stretcher down the hall. You know, you just at that point, it's not about soccer anymore. You're always worried, you know. I mean, this is a this is a major, you know, operation on the knee. So you know, you never know. Um, you hope for the best. You know, and we did. You don't repair the ACL, you make a new ACL. Uh, and then to reconstruct it, you have to get a graft. So you need something to reconstruct it with. And there's three different grafts that we use. With her, we decided to use a patellar tendon autograft. What that involves is taking two and a half centimeter plug from the kneecap, uh, 10 millimeter wide portion of the patellar tendon, which is about a third of the patellar tendon. And then we take a two and a half centimeter bone plug from the tibia. That's the most common graft choice in the United States. That's, that's what we use and that's the gold standard for athletes in the United States. Megan was in surgery for a few hours. Uh, he came out and he said, hey, he said everything went excellent. Um, it couldn't have went better. The surgery went well, but that didn't make the recovery any easier. Physical therapy more. was hard um, work. She was uh, operated on and the next day uh, she was in here for therapy, so it's really a pretty quick turnaround from the OR into getting them started with their therapy. That first day I went in there, I was just miserable. I was like, I don't want to be here, this, everything hurts. And he was like, all right, you know, this is day one, this is the beginning of your recovery, and you know, the better we do now, the, the sooner you come back. For Megan, the aches and pains quickly turned into determination. Getting my knee to bend was a really the first big step. Once I did that, then I could really start progressing at the speed that I wanted to. I can remember taking her to PT early in the morning and uh, John would say, all right, you know, we're gonna get on the bike. And she'd be like, on the bike? I would get on the bike. And that first day when I could get my leg all the way around the bike on the pedal was, it was a really big step. It was really exciting for me. It was like finally like some progress I feel like I can see. By week 12, we want them to start jogging. Uh, by week 16, we're starting to think about sports-specific activities, especially little bits of light agility exercise. And then from there, they start in that are sports-specific, and hopefully sometime after six months, usually towards nine, they're ready for their sports again. And Megan was. Seven months after surgery, she was ready to hit the field. It was fantastic. The, the, I know he cleared me in the morning to play. He, I went early on, probably 7 o'clock, and these pickup games started. 
at nine and I was there. I was like, I'm going today. I was like, I, I missed it a lot. I just, I really need to go play. A month later, Megan was playing with her new teammates at Drexel. I can remember her stepping onto the field and it was just like a relief. You know, it's like, all right, she's back to where she wants to be. For what she went through, and having to step into a program like that, Division I, I thought she'd done well, very well. I was just excited to get any time on the field at first and then I got more and more time. I was like, yeah, this is, this is great. I'm playing, I'm doing what I love. It's at such a high level, it's competitive. And I was just having an awesome time doing it. In the end, you know, she does what she always does, which is she picked herself up and dusted herself off and, you know, finished the season as the second highest scorer and academically she made Dean's list. Megan is doing great at Drexel. She tells me she rarely thinks about her knee. Chuck? She looks great and has a great attitude to go with that. And joining us now is Dr. Matthews. Matthew Silvis and Doctor, you worked closely with Megan through that whole thing. How common are these types of injuries and what exactly is the ACL? Uh, ACL injuries are very common in sports. Uh, the ACL is the anterior cruciate ligament. It's a ligament inside the knee joint and it helps keep the knee um, stable. So it stops the lower leg from moving forward on your thigh. Now is this more of a common injury for a boy or a girl or a difference? Uh, girls tend to suffer ACL tears more frequently than boys and we think there's a lot of theories as to why that might be. One of the leading theories is that girls tend to land after a jump uh, or a fall with their knees stiff. Boys tend to lead, uh, land with their knees bent and we think that when girls land with their knees stiff it makes them more unstable, more likely to twist and stress their ACL which can lead to tearing. Let's talk about some of the other common injuries to the knee. There has to be a bunch more. There are a lot of injuries uh, to the knee. I think one of the other injuries that we talk a lot about are meniscal tears. So the meniscus is a, a piece of cartilage in your knee shaped like the letter C. Um, and they act as shock absorbers for your knee, uh, for your day-to-day -day activities. Those can either tear suddenly, uh, such as an athlete might suffer, or later in life they can get some arthritic change to them and can have small tears in those. Um, that's another type of common knee injury that we see in, in it athletes of all ages. And what can we do to prevent knee injuries? Are there any guidelines there? Yeah, I think that the more active we try to stay, uh, the better. We, it's really important to keep good strength and the muscles around your knee joint to withstand your day-to-day -day activities. And maintaining high levels of flexibility, I think, is also quite important. All right, thank you, Dr. Silvis, for thank joining you. us here tonight. And we want to check in now with Deborah Pinkerton in the call center. Deborah, what's going on over there? Chuck, the phone lines are busy. They are going to be open until 8 o'clock this evening, so you can call. The number to call is 717-346-3333. Once again, the lines will be open until 8 o'clock this evening. Now, here to answer our viewer questions this evening is orthopedic surgeon Dr. Robert Gallo. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. This is the question this evening. As a football player, I suffered a fractured patella and subsequent cartilage damage my junior year in high school. It ended my football career. Three years and two surgeries later, my knee is still bothering me and giving me pain every day. What would you suggest I do? Deborah, injuries to your kneecap are very difficult for a couple of reasons. I think the two major reasons are the irregular shape of the patella make any sort of reconstructing of the cartilage very difficult. Another reason is that there are tremendous forces that go through the, the kneecap, so they tend to hurt more. Uh, I think each patella injury is a little bit different, so probably you'd be better off seeing an orthopedic surgeon who can kind of guide you through the process. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Dr. Gallo. And the phone lines, if they are busy, you can email your questions to questions at abc27.com. Stay with us. We will be right back.